Will it blend? That is the question. So this is like the 3,000th time I've recorded this tutorial and I thought that I'd go for a different way of recording my tutorials so I don't have a reason to not want to edit. So this tutorial will be a little bit different from the other ones but hopefully it's still easy to follow. And with that, why don't we talk about what we're doing today. Today we are going to convert a sim from Sims 2 to Blender so you can do very nice renders of your sim or possibly even get some external animations like some people do for Sims 4. Now this is quite an advanced tutorial so I suggest you have at least some knowledge on meshing and just generally posing your sim and also just knowing your way around sim P. But I hope to just guide you through the process of getting all that started. I also suggest at least knowing a little bit of Blender or at least starting to watch some tutorials, some Blender beginner tutorials will be good because I am not an expert in Blender and I am learning every single day. And with that, let's talk about some things you'll need. You'll need Ninja Ripper, SimP, Gimp, Milkshape 3D with the GMDC plugins for Sims 2, and of course, Blender. I am going to be using Blender 2.83, and I will have a link in the description on how to get it. In fact, I'll show you quickly how to get it. So I'll have a link to this Blender org previous versions. You go to download, and then you're going to go to, go down to Blender 2.83, and then the latest version that was released of Blender 2.83.12 and you're just going to click the MSI version if you have Windows 64 obviously select the one for whichever operating system you have and just install it like you would any other program. Now let's start with getting Ninja Ripper. You're going to have to scroll down all the way to the bottom of this website, click manual download, then just click download and you'll get this zip file. Just go ahead and open it with whichever zip program you use. And then just extract the folder to wherever you want. You see here I put in my, my documents folder and I already have it. And then you're just going to go into the folder, go to x64, and run the ninjaripper.exe. Once you get to the ninjaripper.exe, for the target program, you're going to want to select your target file and you're going to want to follow your file path to get to where, wherever your Sims 2 body shop is. This path will normally be in your C drive, Program Files x86, Sims 2 Ultimate Collection or whichever Sims 2 version you have if you have the disk version, and then whichever is your latest stuff or expansion pack. So for me, it'll be within the Fun for Pets, Stuff Pack 9, CS bin, and then you click the Sims 2 Body Shop EXE. And for an output directory, you're going to want to make a new folder wherever you want, just to put all the files that are going to be extracted from Ninja Ripper. I tend to put mine in subfolders depending on what character I am doing. And then before we run, check your settings and make sure that the textures is to F4 and that forested now is F9. It will be the other way around by default. We're just going to use this to get the textures from your sim. Click OK and then run and let your Sims 2 body shop load up as normal. Once body shop is all loaded, go to build sim, build or clone sim, and then pick whichever sim you want to render. I have made this girl for this tutorial. We are going to click clone selected sim. And now that all the junk is off screen, hit the F4. And I'd like to rotate my sim just to make sure that it is done running. Let it run for like 10 seconds. Your program may be laggy. And just make note of what custom content you use for things like the hair and the clothing. 
And once it's done ripping all the textures, click your check marks to finish building your sim. And this will put them at the very front in your most recently modified sim. Now you can go ahead and close out a Sims 2 body shop. Now that you're done with that, go ahead and close Ninja Ripper and then go to the folder that you specified for your output folder. Here there'll be a new folder called underscore Ninja Ripper and just follow the path to there and you'll see all these .dds files. Go ahead and view by details and then sort by size. You're going to want to go ahead and select every file that isn't 257 kilobytes and go ahead and cut or copy and paste them. Back in our main folder, I like to make two new folders called ripped models and textures. And in our new textures folder, go ahead and paste all the files that you copied. Now go ahead and select one of them and click open with and then open with GIMP. Go ahead and click OK on this dialog box. So you're going to just want to export your texture. <laughs> so go to File, Export As, and we're just going to name this a new name that is easier to find and then also add the .png format at the back. And you're just going to want to keep on doing this for every file except for any ones that look like they'll have alpha textures. Most importantly, things like the hair will have alpha textures and you'll have to go find the file. And we'll do that in a little bit. So now that we have all the textures we need, we can go ahead and delete these .dds files. And now we're going to get to something a little bit harder depending on how organized your downloads folder is. Go to your EA games and then in the Sims 2 Ultimate Collection and then go to Save Sims and sort by your date modified. The sim that you just finished will be on the very top. Go ahead and open that with SimP. Over in the resource tree, click on the GMDC and you'll see a few files. First, click the one with age in zero and make sure it's not the one with LOD 15 at the end. Right click on it and click extract. This first one is your face. And go ahead and navigate to your ripped models folder and just call it face.5gd. Depending on if your sim is wearing accessories, they'll have additional GMDCs. This saves you a lot of time as you don't have to extract the meshes individually. So if your sim is wearing multiple things, it may be a good idea to go ahead and hit preview in the bottom right and then extract it so you can name it properly. Now with sim P still open, navigate to your downloads folder and remember how you noted what custom content you use? You're going to have to find which custom content you use. We'll go ahead and open up the mesh folder first. Automatically it'll bring you to the GMDC and you're going to want to find what age you use. And now let's grab the textures. In my case I'm actually not sure what color this is called but I'm pretty sure it's mint so I'm just going to drag it over, go to texture image, and then look for a preview that matches. Which this does, and since there's two textures that already match, I imagine one of them's the elder female, but since they're the same anyway, I'm just going to export one of them and go to our textures and just call it hair. And you're going to want to do the same thing for the clothes, so I hope your downloads folder is really organized. So now that you have all your meshes and all your textures, let's go ahead and piece together the meshes. Open up Milkshape 3D and go to File, Import, Unimesh Import. 
Navigate to your folder, your ripped models folder, and just start importing all the 5 GDs. If this pop-up comes up saying some of the skin weights do not equal 100%, go ahead and click yes. Whenever you import your second one, it'll come up with this dialog box. Go ahead and just click OK and then continue on. With the face 5GD, you're going to not want to create any blend groups. And with any of the clothing, if your sim is fat, then you are going to want to create blend groups. In this case, she is a thin sim, so I'm going to click no. Now that all your pieces are together, you're just going to want to go to File, Export, and Export as a Wavefront OBJ. And just select the Ripped Models folder, and you can just name it the name of your character or whatever you'll really remember. Now you can go ahead and close out a milkshake. You don't have to save. And now you can open up Blender. Make sure your scene is clean and then go up to File, Import, Wavefront OBJ, and then navigate to your folder where you just extracted that OBJ. Now before you import, go to Geometry and Split by Group, and then import your OBJ. Now, depending on your model, you'll have more or less parts on the right here in a hierarchy. I'm going to make some modifications to this model, like deleting anything that's unnecessary, like some of the stuff in this choker or this necklace that I don't really want, and then also fill in these lenses with actual glass. Okay, that took way too long, but let's continue on to the next step. We're just going to go into edit mode and select everything by pressing A and then hit F3 on your keyboard and search up tries and apply the tries to quads modifier that comes up. And then just keep on doing that for every single mesh on the hierarchy. Let's start making materials. I'll start with the top here as this has one of the most simple materials, which is just some cloth material with a defuse. Let's go into edit mode and make sure we select everything that is cloth and not the actual skin. Now that we have the cloth selected, go ahead and switch to Material Preview and select one of these default OBJs and switch it to Defuse BSDF. Drag from the top left here and switch to Shader Editor. 
Here, go ahead and click Shift A and search up Image Texture. Drag the color to the color and then open up the texture you want to use. Go ahead and make sure it's assigned, though it obviously is because everything's kind of creepy right now. Just click Assign and rename it something like Top. Then make a new material and from this drop down, select Top and we're going to make a copy of it and we'll call this Body. Hit Control i to reverse your selection and we're going to make a little bit of adjustment to the skin to make it look a lot more real and very pretty. Go ahead, click Shift A and search up the principal BSDF. And also add a mix shader. Drag it in between the lines here and then drag this BSDF to the shader and match the color to the color and then click Assign. I'm going to go ahead and switch to Object Mode, add a light, and we're going to switch to Render View. So I'm going to just do switch some of the settings so it looks a lot better whenever I preview this. Switch the Render Engine to Cycles and switch it to GPU Compute. This will let it render faster so we can actually see what we're doing here. Go ahead and switch to Rendered View. And this is what it'll look like in your final render. Of course, less creepy textures on everything else here. I'm just mostly paying attention to things that I'm going to change, like the subsurface, specular, and roughness. Roughness is exactly what it sounds like. The less it is, the more shiny it gets. This is good for things like plastics, metals, or glass, but of course this isn't really good for skin. The specular is how much shine is coming off it. So the more specular, the more shine, and if it's at zero, you're getting no shine. I like to set the specular up a little bit, and then the roughness up quite a bit. I like to add a specular because this takes the color from underneath for the specular rather than just making a stark white. This adds a nice, healthy little glow to your sim. Now we're going to mess with the subsurface scattering. Subsurface scattering is basically what happens whenever you put your hand in front of a light and you see all the red and meat in you. I don't know how else to describe it. It just makes the skin look very much alive and very pretty, nothing that you could ever accomplish in game. So I like to mess with it here in Blender. For this, drag the subsurface up to 1.2 or 1.4, depending on how you're feeling. You'll notice it looks good, but it looks a little bit odd. That's because there's been a little bit of a white cast put over it. Go ahead and take the subsurface color and take it to black or a very dark gray. Back in render view, it looks very nice. If you have a sim that isn't human, like an alien, you may want to mess with the subsurface radius. I'll put an example up of what I'd use for an alien. Let's go ahead and make a material, which will be a transparent one. For things like hair, glass, or anything that might be transparent, like the skirt I have. Go ahead and select what you want to change, and then make a duplicate of the material, and rename it accordingly. Scroll down until you find Viewport Display, and change the blend mode from Opaque to Alpha Hashed. Back in the Shader Editor, add a Mix Shader, and bring it in between the lines, but make sure that the Diffuse BSDF is in the second slot. Now add a Transparent BSDF, and drag that to the open slot in the mix shader and drag the alpha of the image over to the mix shader. And of course, don't forget to change your material. Now just repeat the process of duplicating whatever material is closest to what you need. Like for this skirt, I'm going to make a copy of the hair one, rename it, and just change the texture to what I need. Or for the face, I'm actually going to copy the body's texture and of course, change it to the face texture. There we go. A lot less creepy now. Well, a little bit. She's still got a flesh necklace.
And for all the other materials on this, I'm actually going to have fun with the principled BSDF because there's a lot of different things you can mess with in Blender. the next day. So the next step we're gonna do is just some optimization things and all that. So what we're going to do is start by just selecting anything like the body. Like right now I just have the top. So you're gonna want to have one part of the body selected and then you want to hold down control and select some other part. I'm just going to continue this for pretty much everything that's touching or just as a part of the main body. I actually won't be selecting the skirt with this. But things like the chest of course is connected to the face which of course is the body and then you also need to grab the scalp which generally will just be called hair instead of your hair alpha. So once you have all those selected hit Control J to join them all as one. And then in edit mode Make sure everything is selected by hitting A, then go to Mesh, Cleanup, and Merge by Distance. This will remove a lot of vertices, so a lot of times it'll be just things like on these seats here. So you may be wondering what those blue lines are that you keep on seeing all over the model. Those are what is known as sharp edges, and while they look fine right now, you may want to clear ones that are where they shouldn't be, like on the arms and on the seams of the neck, but generally I'll leave ones that are like on the edges of clothes or things like the details of the face, like the edges of the nose, the eyes, the mouth, I'll leave all those, but the rest generally I'll clear because it'll look very bad whenever we actually start rigging and posing the sim. So what you're going to do is select some of these edges, you don't have to do it all in one go, but just select some of them that you want to clear. Hit Ctrl and E, and they'll bring up this menu, and you want to go down here to Clear Sharp. You'll see all those blue lines go away that you selected. And then you can just continue on down the body and do things that you also want to clear. And you shouldn't have to do this, but if for some reason there's missing sharps, you pretty much do the same thing but in reverse. Like I want to add sharps to the edges of these straps here. You just hit Ctrl E and make it sure that you mark it as sharp. Now this next step is all down to personal preference. If you want to make things more smooth or leave the model more simple for things like animations, 
I suggest leaving it more low poly, but if you're just going for one image, then I suggest smoothing out some of these things, especially these hot dog fingers. So let's go ahead and do that. With the body selected, go ahead and go to your modifiers tab and add a subdivision surface modifier. And you'll see immediately everything seems smoother, but it can still use some work. In particular, it's going to smooth out everything, which may be good for things like the fingers, but may be bad for things like that need more detail or more defining, like most of the face or her elf ears or, you know, bottoms of your shoes. So you may like the look of the subdivision. In fact, I generally go, if I'm doing subdivision, I want to do the most. So you can actually turn this up. You can make your viewport one if your viewport's more laggy, but then turn your render up to two. I like to make sure that everything looks nice. So I turn my viewport up to two since my PC can handle it, but don't feel bad if you have to turn your viewport down to one because in the render, it will look even smoother and it will look, but how do we fix? things like the feet or the bottom of her shirt or anything that you actually want to keep sharp. Well, for some things like the face, actually, I'm not going to actually apply the subdivision. Now note, this is very much optional as most times I do subdivide the face, but I just don't particularly like how it looks with her face. So I'm just going to separate it. And I'm only going to apply the subdivision surface modifier to the body. Now let's fix some of those edges. Start with the more pressing matter, the bottom of the sh these shoes. What you'll want to do is make sure everything's not selected. And then just go ahead and select what you want to fix, like the bottoms of these shoes. And go ahead and switch to edge, select. And then in select, go to select loops and select boundary loop. And this will just select all the edges on the outside. And you'll want to hit control in B to bevel. And you'll notice your viewport gets really laggy here. To fix this, just turn off the real time and then hit control B. And you'll notice it looks a lot better. But you'll notice the UV got kind of messed up. Use the scroll wheel on your mouse to up the amount of segments to help make it more sharp and also help fix that UV weird thing that's happening. And this bevel is going to be really tiny because you'll see whenever we apply it and then turn back on the real time, it looks a lot better. She's not walking on spheres anymore. So you'll want to do this for anything you want to fix. Like you'll see up here with the straps actually, they got kind of messed up as well. So I'm just going to select those edges, which again, it's helpful to have actually the blue lines here because it gives you a bit of a guide as well. And rather than select boundary loops, because I don't quite trust it with how odd this shape is, I'm just going to deselect the edges I don't want beveled. And you'll go ahead and hit Ctrl B to add the bevel. And you'll see actually if you zoom all the way in, it added that extra bevel that you did before. And you'll just want to repeat this for just about any edge you want fixed.
Since you're happy with how everything's looking all subdivided, go ahead and hit apply. And this next step you shouldn't have to do if you subdivided the face as well. But if you're like me and decided not to subdivide the face, go ahead and select the face again. Hit Ctrl J to join them all. And I'm just renaming it to keep everything organized. Go into tab. And you'll see now the neck is not attached to the body. Select one of the vertices on the lower poly version of the neck. Hold down shift and then select the vertice that is the closest match to the higher poly body and hit M and then merge at last. And this will bring the next vertice over to the higher poly version. And just keep on doing this for about every single vertice. Alright, so I did some of this off screen because I was trying to figure it out myself. So how you get the rest of this neck to fill up these holes here is you're going to go into edit mode of course. You're going to hit Control R to make a loop cut. Go ahead and click. And then just click because it will automatically be centered. And just do the same because there's two other vertices you have to do. If you accidentally mess up and you moved it like a pixel, just go ahead and hit escape and then it'll be centered again. And once you have all these new edges, go ahead and select one of the vertices and then select the higher poly model. And then just do the same thing of merging at last. And then pretty much just repeat the process of making new loop cuts on each of these edges and connecting the vertices. And if it gets a little bit messy with the edges, what you can do is select the edges you don't want anymore. Because this one went all the way up the face and I don't quite want that. Hit delete and then under this drop down dissolve the edges rather than fully delete them. Now everything's pretty much ready. We just have to add some sort of rig to our model so she isn't just standing in a T-pose whenever we render her. So we can actually pose her and make her look nice for a render. There's two methods to rig your model. One that is free and one that costs $40. I actually tend to go for the one that I spent money on. But they both have their pros and cons, and of course I did use the free method whenever I first started. So let's quickly go over just the basics of the two methods and some pros and cons about them. Mixamo is a free web app from Adobe. It'll generate a skeleton for any humanoid character, no matter the poly count. 
However, being a web app, it will eat up CPU and memory usage like nothing else. And it does not come with the facial rig, only the body rig. So any facial poses will have to be done manually, either with the Blender sculpting tools or physically point pulling in edit mode. Overall, I actually used Mixmo when I did my first Dina render because I wasn't sure if I'd like Blender or rendering in it and I didn't want to spend money at first. I also use it for things like my MMD memes because I had to turn the sim from a T pose to an A pose and the Mixamo rig's just a lot simpler. So it made the process a lot faster rather than dealing with all the issues that sometimes comes with AutoRig Pro. AutoRig Pro is an add-on for Blender that costs $40. For this though, you not only get a rigging tool that's built directly into Blender, you also get some nice additions like facial rig to make expressions a lot easier and more fine-tuned. The rig also has really great IK and makes bending super smooth. It does have a poly limit though, not binding properly if your model is above about 75 tries, give or take. This can be resolved though with a couple of workarounds which I'll talk about. Also it's not really beginner friendly and I can see it as possibly intimidating to somebody who's not familiar with posing. But still for me, the pros far outweigh the cons and this is the way I personally rig and pose my sims for things like just a simple image render. But again, I only suggest this if you really want to take the deep dive as $40 isn't exactly cheap and I suggest you only spend it if you plan on keep on doing renders and all that. So with all the pros and cons listed, you'll have to decide for yourself what rigging method you want to use. I'll have some timestamps in the description as well as a comment and I'll have some chapter markers on the YouTube video itself. Let's start with the Mixamo method. Now that we have our model, go ahead and select all of the meshes by holding down shift and then clicking on everything. And then just hit Control J to join them all as one object. And then go to File, Export, and export it as an OBJ. And then just name it whatever and then export your OBJ. In your internet browser, go to mixamo.com. And here you can either sign up for an Adobe account or log in with just your regular Adobe credentials. You'll come to this page and then go ahead and upload a character and either you can navigate to where it is or you can pull up your file explorer and just drag the OBJ that you just extracted. Once it's all loaded, just go ahead and click next and then match these little circles to the that it matches up to on the model. Like the chin to the chin, wrist to wrist, elbows to elbows, you know. If your character is wearing something that kind of obscures where it should be, kind of make an educated guess on where it would be. And then just click next and it'll take a little while depending on how big your file is and a bunch of other factors but just let it run. And then once your character starts doing this, that means it's all rigged. Just kind of make sure that everything matches up and that everything's moving right, nothing weird. And then click next. And then go to download and then download it as an FBX. And then just for ease of access, grab the file from wherever it got downloaded and put it in your model directory. Back in Blender, go ahead, go to File, Import, FBX, and then just import your FBX. It'll take a second, but you'll notice an armature, but you don't see any. She's down there. Don't worry. She's there. She just imported incredibly tiny for some reason. So slide from the right here, go to Item. And then change all these scales to just one. And now you'll see she's exactly the right size, but the pose is slightly different and she doesn't have any materials. Under the armature hierarchy, go ahead right click on the animation data, click clear animation data, and then select the pose. You'll see all these bones turn blue 
Just click A to make sure that everything's selected. Go to Pose and clear your transformation. You'll see now that the pose is exact. Now select your main body mesh that actually has all the materials. Go over to your modifiers and add a data transfer modifier and select the duplicate mesh without any materials as your source object. Check this vertex data box and then vertex groups. Click generate data layers and then click apply. And then add a new modifier, armature modifier and select your armature. Now you can just delete this unmaterialed model and just to make things a little bit more simple, hold down shift and parent the body to the armature. And now you can just pose as you would. Go ahead, go to viewport display and make sure that's in front. And I like to display it as a wire just to make it slightly more transparent. Now just pose as you normally would. And like I said, with anything with the face, you'll actually have to go into sculpt mode and actually have to pose individual parts of the body. So like if we want her to smile, now of course it's not going to look great because I'm not exactly going to be using this method. So I'm just showing you. And of course if your character has some sort of accessories, it's probably best to just go into edit mode and separate them and then just have only the face so you can sculpt that without messing with the accessories. So let's move on to the auto rig pro method. So obviously go to the link in the description and download the program and then you're going to want to go to preferences, add-ons, install and find wherever you put what you extracted. And you're going to install all three of these files just by clicking install add-on and then making sure the box is checked like I do here. Now whenever you slide from the right you'll have a new little tab called ARP and rather than combining everything we're just going to rig the body alone and then just transfer the data over to all of these accessories here. But before we do anything, we need to make some what I call faux eyeballs. Because if we want a facial rig, the ARP actually wants eyeballs. But the way Sims 2 eyeballs are handled is a little bit different. We'll go over how to pose eyeballs later, but let's just make the quote unquote faux eyeballs. Go into edit mode on your mesh and in face selection just select the eyeballs like so. Then hit shift D to duplicate and don't move your mouse at all just click and then hit P to separate by selection and then select the eyes go into edit mode select one eye click M and merge at center and just do the same for the other eye and then just rename it accordingly now just select the plain old body none of the accessories slide from the right here click ARP get selected objects under auto rig pro smart and now you're just going to match points to different points on the body so this first one is the neck the next one's the chin, and just keep on repeating for every single part of the body. Now we're going to add the facial setup. Just go ahead, click facial setup, and hide anything that's in the way. And you're just going to want to match these points the best you can to different points on the model. And just make sure that you check in with your material preview to make sure that all the points are matching up a little bit better. Once all these points match up, under Eyeball Object, you're just going to want to select those faux eyes you made. And then click go and once you have all these shapes pop up that's your rig i 
I'm going to go ahead and just adjust some points here. Like, I swear the knees are never quite in the right spot. And of course, it thinks that she's wearing high heels with how high her feet are from the ground. But just keep on making some adjustments depending on your model. Once you're satisfied, go ahead and click Match to Rig. And now all well, these boxes will pop up. Now, remember how I mentioned the poly count? Go ahead and select your mesh in edit mode and the poly count is how many tries are in your model. For instance, this one has 58,000, so I should still be fine. But if yours is above 70 or 75, you may want to apply some decimation. I suggest if you are going to apply decimation, just go to decimate. Then use the planar one and set the angle limit to like 2.5 and make sure you limit all of these. And you'll see immediately your face count actually goes down. But in my case, I think I should be fine. So what we're going to do is just select the main body mesh, hold down control, and click on the rig under character group. And then you want to go over to skin tab and then just click bind. And this may take a little bit depending on how high poly your model is. And once this little pop-up comes up saying bound in however many seconds, your character should be rigged. So let's go ahead and test that out by going into pose mode. And just selecting one of the bones and you'll see I actually had an issue. So I'm actually going to revert to the save I did right before and I'm going to check this scale fix function and you'll see here I get the pop up again so let's do go ahead do a little test and you'll see it works now. If the scale fix is not working for you you probably will have to just decimate your model a little bit. So you'll notice as I'm testing, I only rigged the main body like I said, so things like the hair and the glasses and the choker actually aren't following the model. But we'll fix that in a second. Go ahead after testing and making sure that everything's done, clear the transformation of all the bones, and then just select whatever you want to start with transferring. I'll just start with the hair. Go ahead, go to your modifiers tab. Click Data Transfer and select your body as your source object. Go to Vertex Data, Vertex Groups, Generate Data Layers, and then click Apply. And then add a new armature modifier and just select your rig. And now if we test out by posing in pose mode, You'll see it's rigged, but I think it could use some weight paint blurring. I'll do that a little bit while I'm speed posing and all that off screen. I'll just go ahead and do the rest of the accessories. Now for things like the glasses, it'll actually look fine whenever I go into pose mode and I just pose things like the head. You'll see it's tracking the head. But if I pose something like the cheek, it'll start a Affecting the glasses as well, which I don't really want. It's more obvious with things like eyebrows. So if you want something to not be affected specifically by a certain bone, just in pose mode, select one of the bones and take note of what name it is. And then go into edit mode on the object, select everything. And under object data properties, you're going to want to look for whichever bone. And then you're going to want to go ahead and clear active group. Now for something like these glasses, I'm actually just going to remove from all groups. And then I'm going to look for the head bone and just click assign. This will assign it only to the head bone. So now it just follows the head and I don't have to go through searching through all the other bones. Oh yeah, also you can delete your faux eyeballs now.
Okay, so after adjusting some of the weight paints, just for my own model, you probably won't have to do as much, but again, that depends on your model. I really suggest doing something a lot more simple for your first ever blender render. We're pretty much done with all the setup of ARP, and now we can actually get to posing our sim, making a little bit of a background, and getting everything all set up. Hey, what's up? It is post-processing Selena, and I thought that I'd just do some commentary watching over this clip and just kind of give some tips on posing your actual sim. So the most I have for tips is honestly just look up a reference or at the very least draw out the idea that you have in your head. It doesn't even have to be like a beautiful picture or anything. It can literally just draw a stick figure and get the idea out of your head. Um, and just also knowing general body anatomy, what bends where, what looks right, how to make um, things look like they're in motion in particular. Um, there's a particular rule I go by um, whenever posing like hips to shoulders where they're supposed to be completely perpendicular to each other, I believe. I don't remember what art book I read it from, but it is one that I have lived by for years and it makes my poses look very natural but also dynamic. Um, also just looking up magazine poses, just real life. Um, you can also use poses from Sims 2 websites. Just look at those and use those as reference. And yeah. Um, in particular, if you're doing just like one image too, don't be afraid to just go into sculpt mode and fix any clipping or anything. Like you'll see with the skirt here. Actually, it is kind of clipping through her back. And yeah, here I got rid of some of the um, extra vertices that weren't working. And for the face, yeah, same thing. Just always be looking up a reference. If anything, actually like doing the faces in the mirrors might help too. So you know which parts of your face muscles are moving. And you see here, even I'm using the sculpting tools just to get the expression just right. Oh, and here's how to pose the eyes. So you're going to want to go into edit mode, select your face texture, drag open a new window in a new V editor. Just select the eyes and then you can just grab them with G and then move them around. And that's how you pose the eyes in Blender. It's very simple, but yeah, that's kind of how they do it in game. I don't know the exact specifics. Also with the teeth, always with any render I do, I have to physically move the teeth. They're never in the right position, I swear. And always do micro adjustments. You always want to make sure it looks right to you. Make sure that you're happy with the image. Um, and backdrops too. So for this one, I actually did an incredibly complicated backdrop. Um, I really suggest if you're doing a backdrop for your first ever render, honestly, just have a plane with an extrusion and a bevel. Do not do something as complicated as this. I, I had to watch a tutorial. I don't remember who it was by, but it was how to do a field. And then I went to a blender website or like just a 3D asset website for um, these, these plants and grass and all that. And then I watched a tutorial on how to set it up. Oh yeah, and if you're doing an outside thing, uh, bring in an HDRI. HDRIs look so nice, especially whenever you have things like glass and plastic like my sim has here. It also just adds a lot of natural light to your scene. So yeah, see, here you see how I kind of set up the plane for uh, a natural look. I just use a hair particle thing. 
uh, shout out to the tutorial I watched. I'm sure it's from like Blend, not Blender Guru, but uh, CG Geek. I think did it. I I don't remember. I'll put up a screenshot of it. But yeah, I pretty much did that with the grass, and then you would have seen that there's some other plants in that pack, and then I just did the same with uh, the other pack as well. And you know, just making adjustments and all that. Just always make sure that you are happy with your result. And once you are happy with the result, you can go ahead and render. So make sure everything is in cycles, GPU. You could also do it with Eevee if your computer can't handle cycles. Um, I use cycles because I like it. Um, I set the render to about 200 or 300 samples depending on the scene. This one I really wanted good quality. And then in the output, you make sure that you put your image whatever size you want. Make sure it's 100%. So this one I did 19 by 1080. And then later on, I decided to do a 4K image. And that took an hour to render. And in the view layers, be sure to turn on denoising if you are in cycles. That will help with the noise of the image. And once you're ready to render, up at the top left, just click render image and it will start rendering and it all depends on different factors like how much the lights in your scene, how complicated the background is, and how high poly your sim is. So like even for this one, even with the 920 by 1080 render, it still said that it was going to take 20 minutes and then I decided I wanted a 4K image. And yeah, you see it took 50 minutes to render that 4K image. Um, once it's done, go up to image, save as. And honestly, the default settings look great. And it won't give you a huge file size. Well, I mean, I got a 12 megabyte PNG from the 4K image, but that's a 4K image. <laughs> so, and this is the final result. So this is what you can get with Blender. So if you liked this tutorial and found it helpful, give it a like. Go ahead and subscribe too because I'm hoping to do more of these Blender tutorials and if you're having problems, leave a comment. I'll try to get to it if I can answer it. Otherwise, um, try and look up other Blender tutorials as well. But yeah, that's it. Thank you guys for sticking around for this hour-long tutorial. Bye!